Hi there, thanks for watching this video. I'm going to cover how to make your Zoom calls more accessible, inclusive, and hopefully more enjoyable for your participants who are deaf or hard of hearing. I originally intended this video for teachers out in the mainstream who have, may have a deaf or hard of hearing student in their class, but I'm also, the more I think about it, I think it'll be helpful for a wide range of people. And to be honest, we could all do with clearer Zoom calls. Um, I'm going to cover how to maximise your visual signal, so make sure that the video quality is as good as possible, uh, make sure that the sound is nice and clear, and also give some tips and tricks on how to organise and structure your lesson or meeting. So, in terms of having a good video, um, using the Ethernet can make a big difference and it'd be much more stable than just using Wi-Fi. So, Physically plugging in your device into the router uh, can make a big difference. Uh, try and have a clear, as clear a view as possible with no visual clutter in the background uh, when you're hosting your call. You can see I've got my little Z up there, but otherwise I'm not doing too badly. I've got nice um, to plain curtains in the background there. When I have a Zoom call during the day, I have to close the curtains to make sure that my face isn't silhouetted. And I've actually got a little desk lamp, turn it off there, so it makes quite a big difference. Shining in my face, it's not the most pleasant, but it makes a big difference in making sure that my face is nicely well illuminated and easy to see. Um, this is a real personal preference, um, up to you, but I also using makeup to make sure that my Facial features stand out nice and clearly and are easier to speech read. In terms of hardware, you want to use the best equipment that you've got available. I've actually got a little cheap uh, webcam plugged in because the built-in camera to my laptop is pretty poor quality and not good enough for video calls. Uh, if you've got a higher-end device like a fancy Mac, the inbuilt hardware is pretty good. Um, but again, just you know, use the best that you've got access to. In terms of the sound, again, the inbuilt microphone in my laptop really isn't ideal. Um, you, if you can, it would be great if you can use a desktop microphone or a lapel one. I don't know, you might have a headset for your kids playing Fortnite. We're not up to that yet. Um, but yeah, again, just using the best hardware that you can and controlling the background noise as best as possible. We've just got a car going past now. So positioning yourself Again, you're plugged in with that cord now, but um, in a quieter spot as possible will help make your participants, um, you know, enable them to hear what you're saying much more clearly. In terms of setup, uh, in an ideal world, you'd have small groups for shorter sessions rather than one big full uh, class or, or group meeting. I um, appreciate that's not always possible, but from a practical perspective, having heaps of participants in grid view all get lost, they get too small to see and it's really hard to follow um, what's going on. I know that there's speaker view but personally I find that quite uh, jarring to go back and forth so if you have a smaller group you'll get better interaction. Um, just like any um, meeting or lesson giving participants a heads up about what the topics will be and especially any jargon that will be introduced um, it would be really helpful. Uh, if you're using a sign language interpreter, make sure that their video is pinned at the top all the time. And just like using an interpreter in real life, you need to make sure they have all the prep for the topics to be covered. Um, they need regular breaks if it's a long session. Um, and be aware that there's a lag in what you say and that being interpreted and the participant having a chance to respond. So, um, yeah, just use your good facilitation skills, especially if there's multi-languages going on. Unfortunately, Zoom at the moment doesn't have automatic captions. Um, you can have a volunteer type captions as you go, uh, or in some countries you can outsource the captions to an external provider. You can in Zoom have uh, cloud uh, saved sessions auto caption, but then your participants not getting access and captions in real time, so um, bear those issues in mind. Uh, some a really easy little thing that you could do is 
if you're changing topics, uh, put that in a chat window and just say next next item, photosynthesis, whatever, um, so that the deco heart of viewing participant can follow along um, that new topic change. Um, what else? I guess really basic, uh, hopefully if you have a deaf or hard of hearing person in your life you'll be aware of these things, uh, don't cover your mouth, so when you're talking be really aware of where your hands are, I have to sit on mine sometimes uh, and make sure that your mouth um, is not covered when you're talking. Um, and also maintaining eye gaze, now this is such an important part of communication and really artificial uh, over video conferencing. It's really hard to do. I've experimented and I kind of have to look at my forehead to try and give a natural eye gaze uh, with the camera um, coming from the top of the uh, laptop there. Um, but yeah, do your best. It can make a real big difference and help um, make people feel much more engaged with what you're saying. This is just a quick uh, first video. I hope to do uh, many more to support um, all the different parties in this new way of working and learning. Um, I'll be producing them in both English and New Zealand Sign Language. If you're able to help me with translating into other languages, please get in touch. And please check out TalkTown at www.talktowngame.net. Hope this is helpful. Um, thanks very much. Cheers.